Welcome to the Land of House YouTube channel. I'm Seth. This is my off-grid studio and storage space run off of solar power. The problem with solar power is that when you use a lithium iron phosphate battery, it does not charge below 32 degrees. Well, enter the Ampere Time battery. This is a 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery that I will be able to charge because whenever the sun comes up, hits the solar panels, it activates a heater inside of the battery, which then brings the temperature up to above freezing and allows this battery to charge even if it's cold outside. So let's go ahead and pull this out of the box, take a look at it, and then install it into my system and see how it performs. Next week, we're supposed to get low temperatures into uh, the low 20s, possibly even the uh, high teens. So perfect time to test out a battery like this. All right, first thing when I open the box, I have a little packet of information nicely wrapped up in this little zipper pouch. So we'll go over that. Let's go ahead and pull the packaging out here. Luckily, these lithium iron phosphate batteries are not too heavy. So I should be able to pull this right here. I'm gonna drop that box down. Ah, there we go. There we go. First of all, you'll notice this is a nice looking package. It is the Ampere Time 12 volt automatic self-heating 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. The uh, case seems like it is uh, a nice thick plastic, has the terminals up here on the top, and uh, you've got your little carrying handles, so it makes it really handy to move this battery around. Move over here, nothing to see on that side. Here, there's a little bit of information. 12.8 volt, 200 amp hours, 2,560 watt hours, applications, RV, camping, outdoors, solar wind. And I'll probably use this uh, for in the shop here entirely on um, a solar. The bolts here are in a little uh, bit of tape. So you can just pull those out. Let's see if there's different sizes or if they are the same here. From what I can tell, these are all the same size. They just happen to give you four of them. And it also comes with some terminal caps. All right, so as far as the information that's provided here, open up this little bag and pull everything out. It's kind of a nice touch. So right here, share with us. You can just give some feedback on some of their product. And let's see, you got a little warranty card here with some uh, quick information. Life and discovery. Just a little uh, helpful information booklet to show you the other products that this company has. And then here is the actual product manual. So I'll go ahead and look at this and uh, toss some of the most important information your way. I just checked the weather forecast for the next five nights. We're supposed to have temperatures in the mid to low twenties the entire week. So it's a great time to test out the self heating option of this Ampere time battery. I'm going to go ahead and replace my main studio battery with this one. And we can go ahead and uh, both get it fully charged and then do the test to make sure this is going to charge um, after it has uh, heated up. So anyway, let's go ahead and uh, disconnect my uh, off-grid solar here and hook this battery up in its place. It's nighttime, but I'm still gonna go ahead and disconnect the solar here. And then I'm gonna turn off my charge controller. There we go. And now I can disconnect my other battery here. Now I'm gonna get the Ampere Time battery slid into position. And now I'm just going to connect the uh, black cables to my terminals up here. Now the cable to my inverter, I want to use a resistor first to make sure I slowly charge this. There we go. That will avoid having that uh, pop that happens if you uh, charge something up uh, too quickly. All right, go ahead and turn back on my charge controller. The temperature last night was right at 20 degrees and I wanted to come down here and look at the battery to see how it's doing. So first of all, let's find the temperature here of just a surface, uh, 24 and a half, if that will show up for you. And now let's point this over here to the battery. So we got uh, 30, 31, uh, let's see, 29, 
up here is 29, there's 30. Yeah, so 30, and that's the outside of the battery here. And I'm seeing 321 watts at 14.4 volts here on the charge controller. So this thing is charging, it would seem, and the temperature is at least, uh, um, you know, five, six degrees warmer on the battery than it is on the surface. That tells me that the battery is warmer than the outside air here, and it is self-heating. So very good to know that this thing is doing its job right. So let's go ahead and charge this battery up full, and then we will do a full discharge whenever the weather is a bit warmer out here. Well, just after I finished mentioning the previous uh, temperatures, I noticed the battery uh, kicked over to 14.6 volts. And uh, also, if I use my temperature here, got 36, uh, let's see, I saw like a 38 a moment ago, 35, 35. So anyway, temperature, there's a 37. Uh, down here is like 31, 32. So it's warming up everywhere, but the battery has warmed up more than the uh, other surfaces. So it is certainly uh, warmer in there than it is out here. I have now used the Ampere Time 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with self heating feature out here in my studio for right at four weeks. And it has worked flawlessly. I'm just powering my outlets, my lights, and uh, just keeping things normal here. I've had several nights that were below freezing and I use my little temperature sensor and whenever the sun had been out for a while, the battery is definitely warmer than the outside air here. So the self heating feature seems to have worked fine. Let's go ahead and do a discharge test to see how this performs. I have a uh, heater right here, which I'll have uh, hooked up and it's gonna run somewhere around 600 watts. And then I'll also have my little uh, drock meter attached and we'll be using an inverter to pull power off of this battery. So let's go ahead and hook it up. Um, I did just come out here and disconnect this battery from my shop. The um, inverter has been off all day and it was floating at 13.5 volts, which means that this charged up at 14.6 and then dropped back down to 13.5. Uh, so 100% full and ready to be tested. I've been building this test set up and for some reason my inverter up here stopped working. So we're gonna improvise with my other system real quick and that's why the lighting has changed. All right, so I've got my drock hooked up here. Let me zoom in so you can see the data. Battery meter is full, 200 amp hours. We've got 13.6 volts. We've got 1.3 watts consumed. So I'm gonna reset everything here to start this from fresh. Let's begin our test here. I'm gonna press start on my stopwatch, move up here to my little heater and turn this on to setting number one. All right, that has begun to put out heat. Let's step down here. We've got 45 amps, 592 watts, and uh, 199 amp hours. We're now running pretty consistent at about 600 watts. So if I look at the math here, we've got uh, 2,560 watt hours divided by 600. That's a 4.26. So if this were to run at 100% efficiency, that's the time that we could expect. So I will step back down here in a little while and we will see how this battery is performing. The elapsed time is right at an hour and a half. Let me see if I can show that here on the screen. There we go, hour and a half. And let me zoom down here so you can see what our data is showing. So 12.9 volts. Now, of course, that's whenever the battery is being consumed. Whenever you disconnect the battery, it will jump back up. We've got 129 amp hours, 612 or so watts, and a 908 watt hours used so far. So things seem to be going uh, quite smoothly here with the Ampere Time battery. The time is now three hours and two minutes. And let me show you what we have here. We have got uh, 57.2 amp hours left. We've got 620 watts roughly being used. We've got 1.8 kilowatt hours. 
So uh, we still have a bit left to go on this battery and uh, I will bring you back and we'll see what the results are. It has now been four hours and six minutes. We're down to 4.4 uh, amp hours. We've got 2.4 kilowatt hours used. Still running at around 620 watts. And uh, you can see the battery is blinking at empty up there. So we are almost done to uh, being out of these amp hours. At 4 hours and 11 minutes, we are down to 0.5 amp hours. So I'm going to go ahead and call it here. So let's go ahead and stop that. So 4.11 is our time. Turn off the load. Now I'm going to give this about 10 or 15 minutes and see what the voltage goes back up to. You can see it's already jumped back up to 12.6 uh, right there. So I'm going to give it a couple more minutes and we'll see if it jumps up any higher than that. But Anyway, you can see that the uh, battery is still safe as it's jumping back up. So there's 12.7, so we are good to go there. Uh, no damage to this battery. All right, with the inverter turned off, we're at 12.8 volts, which is good. And we use 2.5 kilowatt hours. Very nice. All right, so 0.4 amp hours left there. All right, there we go. That is the discharge test of the Ampere 200 amp hour 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. So my little uh, drock meter just shows 2.5 kilowatt hours. But if you consider the math, let's just, there at the end it was running at about 620 watts, but let's just say about 610. So uh, if you do 610 times uh, 4.1, let's say, uh, that's 2,500. Um, so if you had that extra little bit of the time that was running at uh, 620, that makes up the difference there. So all that to say, this battery is running exactly as it should to spec by the manual. So uh, definitely doing as it should. I've used this now for over a month and it has worked flawlessly. Several nights have been well under uh, freezing. Uh, down to 15 degrees was the coldest. And so the next day when the sun started shining on the panels, heated up this battery first and then began to charge. So protecting the cells inside. If you want to check out the Ampere Time battery, I will have a link to this in the description down below. This is going to become my dedicated shop or studio battery here because um, this time of year, especially, we have lots of cold nights and uh, this will just be my uh, standard go-to battery here for studio lights and uh, my receptacles here out in the shop. So, all right, I'm Seth with Landa House and I will see you in the next video. Bye.